Wheels up, everyone. This is Come On You Reds, your favorite Toronto FC podcast. Another week where we get to dissect another Toronto FC win. I am Gareth Wheeler. Great to have you along. I'm gushing. I'm thrilled because I've been away from my boy for so long now. The last time I saw him, he was pitch side getting at the Generation Adidas Cup down in Dallas, Texas. I'm not sure what he paid the broadcast crew, but this up and coming young coach yeah, genius right. in terms to his, in terms of his tactical approach, what a motivator he is. The one, the only Terry Dunfield, uh, congratulations on quite the tournament, Terry. It was fun to watch along. And as someone who gets to hear about the trials and tribulations of your teams, it was great to see you and your team in action and the spotlight firmly cast on Toronto FC, the young players coming through. It was very cool to watch. Oh, thanks for the big intro, by the way. I don't know about that. Uh, it was the best. Seven games in eight days. Our under-15s had a, had a shot of winning it. it. It was so cool. We were 30 seconds away from a uh, penalty shootout against LAFC. If we get past them, it's Portland in the semis and then Valencia in the final. But uh, the guys were outstanding. They grew throughout the tournament. A lot of the guys uh, were close to their potential. Uh, some top, top learnings. Come back with some nice scalps too. We beat Tigres, beat Club America. It was the best coaching against Greg Vanny. He was over on one. We played the LA Galaxy. Him, Mike Munoz, his sons were playing. It was nostalgic. It, it was the best. Were you talking smack at all, Terry? <laughs> it was funny. We uh, It was very competitive. and <laughs> We scored in the last minute. Uh and that got us out of the group. We won a group of Monterey, the Galaxy, and Orlando. And the goal goes in, the whole place erupts. Everyone runs into the corner. Everyone's going nuts. Uh, and then we kind of regroup and we've got Club America and then LAFC next, who they played a ton. So I reached out to Greg and we strategized together on how to beat LAFC. It was uh, super cool. Very cool. I, it was fun seeing some of your, your young players. A, a young Will Caldwell out there, son of oh. Stephen Caldwell, playing really well at center back. It was a lot of fun to kind of put some faces to the names that I hear about on a regular basis. He's, yeah, we've got to give him a shout out. He was a stud throughout. And, and whenever we kind of give him positive feedback, he kind of tanks. So I've got to be careful if he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the penny dropped and uh, it was kind of cool. Michael Bradley and I were talking about him at lunch today and he's got just this game awareness, this savviness. He can pick a pass and uh, he's already quicker than his dad. So he should be good. It, it, it speaks well of genetics. You are about three weeks away from welcoming your baby into the world. So there, there is hope Terry <laughs> for a future Dunfield <laughs> to do some damage out there. Very cool. I didn't realize that this tournament ran simul simultaneously to the Dallas cup a tournament that I played in when I was younger and a lot of probably our listeners, if you grew up playing, playing rep soccer, growing up in the Toronto area, you probably played in the Dallas cup. And this is the, I guess the next iteration that adds maybe a little bit more of a professional feel with Academy teams, Terry, because it seems like some top clubs were represented worldwide in this tournament. Yeah. Your boys were here, Manchester United, Celtic, uh, Valencia. Um, yeah. This top teams from all over the world, top 40 academies uh, come in for at the under 15, under 17 age groups. And then simultaneously, the Dallas Cup's running uh, at, a, at a different venue. Uh, we're at Dallas, uh, Dallas's training ground. Uh, that tournament's running and it's got a huge opening ceremony and um, it's a top, top event. And the final's actually in Frisco in Dallas' stadium at Toyota Park. We actually won it with our under 16s two, three years ago. Uh, John Mondino was the head coach. Him and I went down and uh, to a top event as well. But it's uh, it's so cool what what's uh, what these guys uh, the games they have in front of them, how they're able to compete, and it gives you a nice feel where we're at against the rest of the world. Yeah, at the professional broadcast. It, it, it was cool to, to watch. And I think a lot of TFC fans were curious because now that so many academy players have made their way into the first team now, you kind of want to see what the next wave could potentially look like. So, and, and, and look, the future, it's not too far off for some of these players that were playing as well, right? Like uh, no. the trajectory of some, and it, some might come up and surprise in terms of the trajectory of their, uh, of their development, but certainly... Uh, right now where the club is at, 
there are players that were playing, whether it be the under 17s or the under 15s, that will be right in the mix in short term. Yeah, the, I think you nailed it, man. The, the pathway is real. And seeing DeAndre Kerr, Jaden Nelson play on the weekend, call ups for Adam Perlman and Kobe Franklin from the second team to the first team emergency loans, is it's so real. And then you connect the Canadian men's national team to it, how well they're doing. Young Canadian soccer players can only be inspired that, you know what, that the dream is real and you, and you can achieve it right on your own doorstep. Well, congratulations, man. Plenty to be proud of for you and the team, the entire academy team, really uh, doing some work, representing the, you know, representing Toronto uh, down in Dallas. So congratulations, Terry. Uh, while you were gone, TFC is doing work, man. Points in four yeah. straight games, wins in three consecutive games at home. The latest against the previously undefeated top team in Major League Soccer, Philadelphia Union, 2-1 was the final on the weekend. Jimenez, his fourth goal in seven in the 39th minute. Pozuelo in the 51st. This is back-to-back games as well. TFC have gone down. They went down twice in Real Salt Lake to come back with a point. They went down against the Union and somehow, some way, fought, them, fought their way back into it. Uh, what stands out to you more about this win, Terry? Was it the performance of the team or was it the fact that they just were able to find a way to come away with the, th- the, the full three points? Um, probably a hybrid of the two. The, there's some real quality moments within the game. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't put together 90 minutes, but that's probably as expected uh, with a new manager coming in, some new players coming in. It's going to take some time where you're seeing consistent 90 minutes put together back to back. So I'd say the nice moments uh, coupled with just finding a way to get results, finding a way to win. And that's three wins in in four and a draw. So the, the run continues. Insigne scored on the weekend. You've got him coming in in the summer. So it's it's just positive vibes right now. And, and so it's, it's probably a combination of nice moments and then just grit and, and finding a way to get over the line together. I, I, I keep on saying it now. I'm not sure if we've addressed it on this podcast, but the team is fearless. Like they don't care who they're playing, who they might be missing, who's on the field in that individual moment. It's like every time they go out there and think they can go toe to toe, even with the big boys in major league soccer. And a lot of these players that are getting a look right now are one in experience two perhaps playing out of positions that they're not all that comfortable playing, but they simply find a way there's the belief there's the resolve and the high level of intensity, especially off the ball, Terry, like every time that they're out of possession, they're hunting. Like they're so aggressive defensively that they're dictating kind of the tempo and the way the game's going to be played, whether at home, whether they're away. I think it's a a wonderful foundation that's being built for, you know, potentially a healthier, deeper team come the summer months. And, And what's it leading to? exciting brand of soccer and, and and i think it's got our fans off their off their seats right now it, it's back and forth lots of transition moments there, there's energy to it the closest players you said is step into the ball and there's cover in behind them and then bob bradley really challenges the group to play forward if you can and play through windows and really attack with hard runs in behind and we're seeing more and more of those actions come out and yeah, I think, I think we're just like that. That snowball is just starting to build. That, that there's going to, I mean, the guys are in a great spot right now. With any positive run, as we walk you through a little bit of what stood out uh, from the 90 minutes at BMO Field. By the way, it was cold again last weekend. Really bloody cold. Like, come on, man. The, the next home game's like, a, you know, a week from now. Mother Nature, do us a solid. It was freezing again. But over the course of any run, you need a little bit of luck to go your way. Terry, Jaden Nelson was lucky to stay on the field. 20th minute sliding challenge comes in and crushes Kai Wagner on the inside of the knee. I have no idea how Nelson just saw yellow. Like full marks to him. You know, he's jacked up. He scored the he scored his first goal in Salt Lake City. He came through and absolutely clattered him. I like I, I was sitting there in the press box. I'm like, well, he's off. And he ended up staying on. You go down a man to Philadelphia Union, you're asking for it, but you know, a little bit fortunate. It's gone both ways. You know, some difficult calls have gone against TFC this season. And I guess it's just kind of the soccer gods evening things out. 
Yeah, there, there might be a suspension coming on that one, but I, I think it actually comes, and I think maybe you touched on it, it, it comes from a good place. It comes on the back of that wonder goal against Salt Lake. Uh, he'd had a couple of nice moments before that. You're starting to just see him out on the pitch more. There, there's more of a presence, and, and he's involved in a, a lot of the positive actions for TFC, whether it's him with the final act or he's setting up that final act and I think he's playing with a little bit of freedom too now to just go and find some space across uh, the opposition back line. So I, 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 I think it's something he's got to be careful of. We got away with one, I, I believe, Salcedo maybe in, in the other corner. That could have been a red. But, um, yeah, just when it's going well, remember to just control your emotions a little bit because that would have been a tough one. Salcedo so actually received an additional suspension after that challenge and nothing's come out of as of yet in terms of supplementary supplementary discipline. I should say at the time of taping, uh, Salcedo so did miss that game against the union as well. You're like, okay, what's this back line going to look like? Chris Mavinga came in for his first time since the FC Dallas game, the first game of the season where he was yanked after 45 minutes. And what we saw was kind of vintage Chris Mavinga. Like what we saw during, you know, an MLS Cup winning year, Chris Mavinga, focused, aggressive, athletic. Like when he is in that mindset, he's a top, top center back. I, you know, it's, I feel kind of feel like this attitude, this kind of swagger within the group, it's contagious, where it's not just Mavinga, it's other players are like, yeah, okay, I'm on board. And if I'm going to make my way back into the team, that's the level that I need to be playing at. So um, him and Shane O'Neill at center back in, in a pair, and we've seen TFC play with three at the back, two at the back, so many different formations. They were strong throughout the game, Terry. They were very good against an excellent Philadelphia Union attack. Yeah, and I think you're always going to come up against 2v2s or even 3v2s against you. When you play against the Union's diamond, at times the front two cheat. They stay really high. They've got a 10 that can join the attack in transition. So the pace of O'Neill and Mavinga was going to be important. The laser focus, the concentration of, um, of, of making sure you're in the right spot at the right time. His balance is good. Uh, he was dialed in. And, and I think he was playing for his place a little bit. When you look at O'Neill, Salcedo, McNaughton, um, and I guess the team selection methodology of Bob Bradley, the best players play. And, and now it's up to Mavinga to go um, earn that jersey, get that spot back. And his reputation only gets him so far. I, I think, uh, you know, at times it can be cruel in football. That football has a short memory. And, uh, you know, I think he needs to just keep doing what he was doing on the weekend, keep pushing. And um, that'll lead to more opportunities in the team. But uh, as soon as you kind of get a little bit comfortable, um, that's not a good thing in football and never, not for a second, my questioning Chris moving his mindset, but when he's at it, he, he is one of the best left-sided defenders in the league. Uh, my wheels up wheels down in the week. And we're going to start with wheels down. Cause I only have one wheels down to, to kind of throw out there and kind of work sequentially as the game played on TFC conceding first. And, and, and that's not my wheels down. That's not what it's about. My wheels down this week goes on the fact that TFC yet again concedes a goal in transition. Um, there's an explanation. There's a real positive side of this, by the way, as well. But that seems to be the but one the area. Side, no, well, I'll get to it because the one area where Toronto FC has been a little bit loose this year is in transition defending. I think that's an area where they need to improve. The reason why it's a positive is because TFC are being super aggressive in the way that they defend. So on a long ball that's play, played, Shane O'Neill is trying to win that ball, win that ball in that challenge. When he doesn't, TFC starts scrambling. For, for me, if you're going to be across that back line, if you're going to step in one of those vulnerable moments when the back line is high, you just need to make sure that you have numbers there, that, that, that you're covered. Because Philadelphia Union went the other way, three on three, full credit to them. They executed Carranza, very good young player, by the way. Uh, Inter Miami could use him right now, but for obvious reasons, he's with Philadelphia. He scores the goal in the 33rd minute, but it's just that area of transitional defending. I think the methodology, the mindset behind it's right, but perhaps the execution is just something that TFC need to clean up a little bit. Did that make sense? The positive uh, negative side of it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think the, the upside of uh, trying to put out the fire earlier, or higher up the pitch or, being a little bit more aggressive in defensive transition is 
if you do win it, um, you're higher up the pitch. And your, your player ahead of you, your winger, your midfield lines, higher up the pitch and closer to goal. Um, the downside is, is, is you potentially give up a little bit more. You give up a little bit more space. Um, and at times, you know, that can be exploited if, if your timing of the intervention isn't quite right rather than maybe just protecting the space behind, protecting the goal, buying time, makes time for your teammates to, to recover. And there's been a little bit of a shift in, in our style of play at TFC to be a little bit more aggressive in those moments. Uh, what stood out to me on the goal was, um, I, th I thought your detail was great, was I thought Caden Chung took the throw in too early. Uh, we, we'd had the tempo of the game had been high for, for two, three minutes. The ball goes out of play on the right-hand side. He quickly picks it up and throws it in. And TFC hadn't shifted across. I believe it was just, there was one red shirt in the picture frame of the broadcast. So if you do lose it, you're now outnumbered in that channel, a couple passes and all of a sudden you're at TFC's back line. Whereas I think in that moment, Caden Chung just takes a sting out of the game, allows everybody to come across, uh, reconnect, and, and then go back to work. Um, yeah, well, well, well described. And, you know, Chung has done really good. He came back into the team after being injured the game before. Uh, but you're right. These are the little intricacies that as the team plays more games that you expect the players to read the situation a little bit better. Um, but a uh, fair point made by you. Um, TFC, just like Salt Lake, like that, that quick response, Terry, like, yeah. It only took six minutes before Jimenez scored. Have you ever scored Well, you were a teammate on a two on five? Because that's what, <laughs> that's what it was. It was like Osorio in Jimenez, the four Philadelphia defenders uh, packed around the top of the 18 yard box. I, I called it. What did I call it? I said it was a give and go and give and take. <laughs> and then it went into the back of the net and it had to be Jesus scoring on Easter weekend. It had to be. Uh, Jimenez gets the goal. Um, but just those two players, they just both went like beast mode and a perfect finish into the top corner. I think first of all, we've got to rewind to have you ever scored or your teammates because my, my sample size wasn't big enough. <laughs> so you might have been, you might have been played for body. you might have been the Oso in that scenario, which is a good place to be. Uh, yeah, it is a good place to be. And how good was he? I thought I thought also was outstanding, finding little pockets of space, receiving on the other side of, of the window, uh, as Bradley called it, receiving in the gap. And I thought he pulled the strings uh, in the attacking half for the team. Um, he was the player TFC were kind of trying to find on the half turn. And uh, I, I thought he, he really looked after the ball well, was positive with it. And it was almost like a PlayStation goal. It just kind of, I guess, uh, the middle of the pitch, it just kind of opened up nicely for him to almost play checkers through it. Mm. Uh, and, and, and the timings were great. And uh, he combined really well. It was all under control too, which was nice. And then it pops out to Jimenez. And um, that's, that's a player in form when you score a goal like that. Time just slowed, slowed down. He knew the type of finish he wanted to execute and he just felt it into that far corner beautifully. Man, last season, TFC were screaming out for that number nine, right? Like once Io Akinola went down through injury, you just didn't have that player that boom, right place, right time. The thing is with Jimenez too, a lot is being talking about in the footballing world, just proper recruitment. He's a player that fits the way that they want to play. And he's a real good player to be a focal point in a team with a lot of youth and legs and, and athleticism around him. I just, I, I, the, the polish that he's providing, um, it, it's, it's just great to see. He's hit the ground running, Terry. Like you probably played with players over your career. They're just waiting to get that first goal Four in his first seven games. I mean, and, 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 and the, the, there are four goals coming in four separate games as well and big goals as well different types of goals. And I, I think he came in as he used the word focal point is a little bit of a target player up top. That's kind of sexy and nice between lines links up play. He'll, he'll nick a goal here or there. Um, he's okay. Defensively. He'll kind of push teams to, to one side. But I think since he's been at TFC that it, his game's grown, he's become more of a threat. He's living off shoulders of, of defenders. He's running, running in behind teams. 
Um, and I thought his movement was clever to just kind of pull off the shoulder of the, of the center back and create a little bit of space for himself to kind of open up his hips. And I, I think it's a testament to the coaching staff as well. Well, it, it's a testament to the scouting staff because everyone's looking for that big marquee signing yeah. from a from a league that you might watch on a regular basis. I'm not sure how many yeah. of our listeners are watching, you know, the Polish first division, you know, or Give are Jeff aware of like, out. yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a great pickup, a player that fits, player that came at the right price, the right ticket, and um, looks to be a real good comp- contributor to this team. A goal was called back by Philadelphia in the first half, a, a shot from distance, two or three players offside, but it was a proper call that was made as Alex Bono had no idea where the ball was. And I believe it was Carranza again, who was in an offside position. There was one other thing that stood out to me in the first half, Terry, the central midfielder for Philadelphia, Martinez. He's a great player. Like (laughs) man, he's good. He was talking so much bleep to Michael Bradley in the first half. He was, he was doing one of those things where he covers his mouth like this, just so no one can read his lips he was serving up so much smack. And I just was thinking to myself, like, man, you don't do that to Michael Bradley, like whether it's Michael that's going to get you or maybe it's karma. And in the second half, TFC get the match winning goal in the 51st minute through Alejandro Pozuelo. Caden Chung, by the way, was involved in that. And Martinez was like a statue. He came over to help. I, I forget the defender that was actually on Pozuelo, but he came over to help. And Pozuelo just Mr. Freeze, like put him on ice. And it was like such a typical Pozuelo goal where he passes it into the back of the net, like it's pure placement. And I just thought to myself in that moment, like, good on you. Like Martinez has it coming, like know your spot, you know, you know, know where you are right now. Bradley's a legend in North American football. It's like, just ease it up just a little bit. And the fact that he was put on a poster for that Pozuelo goal, I thought it was appropriate to say the least he's been a leader for the group this year he's uh he's been economical i and i mean that by there's he's been involved in in almost every moment um i i I think he's just in a really nice rhythm and uh there's there's a he's light bright and clear right now he's just out there playing He's, he's he's not trying too hard and i know he's a competitor he's just uh I think, I think he's just enjoying himself under Bob and um, the, 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 he's connecting passes and he's driving the team forward in the right moments. He's covering, he's communicating. He's, he's kind of flying under the radar nicely, but he's, uh, he's been very good. Michael Bradley and uh, Martinez uh, needs to be careful. He doesn't bite off more than he can chew. <laughs> uh, I like their, I like Philly's left back Wagner. I think uh, the yeah. guy who scores the goal, he's got a wand to the left foot. His set pieces are good. Um, but I, I, I think Jaden Nelson kind of made it difficult for me. He, he, did, he didn't know how to deal with Jaden. So well done, Jaden. Um, and then just, uh, just quickly, maybe the last thing that kind of st- or what stood out to, to me was I thought Potsuela was, was back to MVP form. Um, he kind of had a role off of him and as in the second, we played a bit of a diamond at times, kind of lived in that central area, did enough defensively, but I thought he, was very effective. His feet are so quick. No one wants to dive. So you put, he's got six players around him. No one wants to bring him down for a penalty. He just wiggles his way, creates half a yard, and, and just passes it home, as you said. But I thought Potsuela was very, very good. One goal in 21 games in 2021 in all competitions for Potsuelo. Two goals in now seven games here in 2022. Uh, part of it, and, and, and Alejandro s- spoke about it, the difficulties he had off the field last season, but it's also the position that he's playing. Like this is the right role for him to play in a two underneath a number nine. He's given the freedom within the system to go out from an attacking perspective and switch the space and, 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 and utilize the space and not to play too wide, play on the inside. I, I think that this formation and the, you know, the formation changes, but this style of play uh, really suits him to a T. And I think it's put him in a real comfort, comfortable position where he can go and, and you know, and express himself and be happy on the field. Yeah, good show. I, th- I think it depends on the shape and who you're playing against. And I think kind of living either side of the bottom of the diamond cup coming off the line or when a Philly fullback went forward, finding some space there um, was optimal for him. I think 
wherever he does play, I think there has to be enough freedom for him to, to go and find space. And um, it's important he doesn't move too much and, he, and he's responsible for his defensive duties. But um, this, this was a big step in the right direction. If TFC are going to win silverware this year, he's got to be at it. Uh, Jonathan Osorio, unfortunately, had to come off the field due to a right thigh injury in the 56th minute. He has been training. As of midweek, we're not sure his status for this Sunday against New York City FC, in which would be his 300th appearance for the club. Uh, we hope he's well. Um, my wheels up of the week wasn't him coming off. It was what Toronto FC did after he left the field. Bob Bradley must have changed the formation about three times with Lucas McNaughton coming on, with DeAndre Kerr coming on to, to start the second half. Uh, for, for Jaden Nelson. I counted this. There was at least five players who played central midfield for Toronto FC in this game. Bradley, Osorio, Pozuelo, Kosi Thompson, and DeAndre Kerr all played centrally in the <laughs> midfield. Like at one time, I was like, Michael Bradley's the only natural center midfielder that you have out there, yet players did not care. It didn't matter. They just stepped into their role it was pragmatic, but full of commitment, no questions asked. And they got the job done, Terry. That's my wheels up of the week. The fact that Bob was able to change formation so many times and so many different players stepped into different roles in order to come away with the full three points. I like that diamond. I, 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 I'm excited to learn more about the nuances of uh, playing against a diamond. It's a tricky one when it's flowing. And uh, I thought Kosi Thompson came in and did a really job, good job of giving some balance to the right-hand side of, of Michael Bradley, some important clearance, did some good decisions, when to come right over, but also uh, keep some distance and balance to the right-hand side. I thought, I thought he did really well. Two more points in this game. Unfortunately for Alex Bono, uh, no clean sheet yet again. I think he's been playing great. Um, TFC, dating back to last year, haven't come away with a clean sheet in 17 games. I feel like that's a missing link. Like Bono's had, there was two real big chances in between. I think it was the 67th and the 72nd minute where Philadelphia had numbers coming down the right-hand side. He did so well closing down space, getting his angles right. Um, shout out to Bones. And you know how much he and goalkeeping coach John Conway just desperately want that clean sheet, right? Just to kind of vindicate the work that they put in and, you know, kind of back up what we're seeing, the, the high level of goalkeeping that we're seeing at present time. Just on that one quickly, Wheels, I'd say you've got to give a shout out to the team as well. I thought the team in the second half protected their lead really well, but did that by the process was protecting the middle of the field and kind of keeping Philly to the perimeter of TFC uh, a little bit. If you ever watch water polo, they, they're almost just passing the ball around us and never really got into the seams of us. Uh, I can see you laughing right now. With that analogy. It's like but, who's watching water polo on a regular basis or, or like handball. Like they, 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 uh, Paul probably uses that one. Like they didn't get into the seams of us. And, and I thought the shots or the air, the pitch that we did give up was okay. And, and Alex yeah. was going to be fine from there. <laughs> uh, final shout out, Jacob Schaffelberg, uh, since coming back from injury, he's been a difference maker down that left-hand side. He's flying. Like now that he's getting older and more mature and more physically fit, like his build in that pace flying down that left-hand side, man, it's, um, it's a real weapon. I think that it particularly plays to his strengths when TFC play at three at the back. So kind of it doesn't take fully take away the defensive responsibilities. I think it just allows him to play a little bit more free and a little bit higher up the field, which suits him really well. So I want to give a shout out to my boy Schaff as well. He's missing half his forehead right now. He ran into the, I saw him at lunch today. Schaff, what's up, man? He's, he's got this huge grace here. He ran what? into the board. Yeah, he's okay though. He says he, he ran into, tough. during the <laughs> game, he ran into the board? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This guy. Trying to put up some cushions up there. Um, He's been at it. Uh, so, so Terry, this team, which is clearly rebuilding, that is playing so many young Canadian players on a regular basis, and they're thriving. And, and we're not seeing the likes of Prizo and Akello and Akinola yet because they're not ready to go. Good to see Akinola available on the substitutes bench uh, last weekend. Maybe we'll see him in New York this weekend. He's getting close. 
but good stuff. TFC now joint third place in the Eastern Conference in Major League Soccer. I did not expect this to come this quickly, this team to be in this position. My question for you is based on what you're seeing, is this, is this uh, sustainable? Because much as we made about, you know, we, a lot of people like to look at XG, expected goals against as well. TFC have the second highest expected goals against in Major League Soccer. How much do you focus on that versus the platform that's being created in order to create something that's sustainable in terms of success right now? Mm. Um, I think the data one scares me a little bit. Um... But I, but I say big picture, um, these are important points in the bag because, you know, reinforcements are coming in the summer and this team's tracking in the right direction. The team's only going to get better. There's going to be more fluidity. They'll start to understand uh, what's required in each moment. So I think it's, we're probably a point or two ahead of maybe where we should be at, um, just looking at pure data. Uh, having said that, um, the guys have the guys have worked hard. They've, they've gelled together really quickly. I think they're enjoying their football. They're, they're buzzing after every training session. They're, in, they're enjoying the, the process of it all right now. So um, I, th- I think what it does too is it, I think this sort of springboard of points allows you to be a little bit more aggressive at times too, away from home to, to maybe go nick a point or, or take a little bit more risk against New York City and um, see, yeah, see where we're at come summer. Let's get straight into that. Uh, next up for Toronto FC, a trip to Queens, New York. Yes, TFC playing at City Field against a team who won MLS Cup a season ago, yet doesn't have a place to call home. New York City FC, Toronto FC beat them at BMO Field a few weeks back. A quirky schedule to start the year, facing the same team twice in a, in a matter of a month. We'll get your thoughts on that, Terry, but... Um, six games this season will be played at City Field, the home of the New York Mets um, for New York City FC as they share you know, their games between their Yankee Stadium, Red Bull Arena. How tough is that, man? It, it's got to be tough on the players and the team, but when you're cultivating a fan base and getting people excited and you're like, where am I going this week to watch my team? It's such a difficult situation and perhaps a situation that TFC can take advantage of this weekend. Yeah, if I, if I put my players hat on, the two things that stand out for me playing in different venues, and, and we had that when Chris Armas took over. We had, didn't we have like five different home fields in the first yeah. six, seven games or something? Good point. Uh, one is your routine is thrown off, um, and then kind of what match day minus one looks like, your dinner, spending time with your family, what where your morning walk fits in, and just kind of your routine, where how you get changed at the stadium, what you you know, whether you jump on the bike before a game, just, I guess you're just kind of routine. And I think there's idiosyncrasies to everybody's routine. It's all a little bit different, but I think that gets thrown off kilter a little bit. And then number two is your sight lines. Um, this, this one might sound strange, but when you're playing at home, you kind of start to understand the, the field and totally where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. You're just kind of picking up. Uh, yeah. You've got different reference points that, that kind of can be thrown off. Yeah. Um, New York City FC starting to turn things around now that their CONCACAF Champions League campaign has come to an end. They lost in the semifinal to Seattle Sounders. By the way, former TFC goalkeeper Stefan Fry, if you're watching on One Soccer, made some incredible saves to see out that tie for Seattle. They're playing <laughs> Pumas in the, in the in the Champions League final. I, I love that guy. Uh, man, what a career he's had. Except for that save on Altidore back in 2016. <laughs> take off. Take off with that one. Um but but New York City FC smashed Real Salt Lake 6-0 last week. Do you want to face a team coming in off a you know a, a win like that? Because I'm all I'd always be more leery of a team coming off a bad loss, a bad or a really good win. Is that a good time to catch New York City? Yeah, you'd probably rather it the way we, we have it, where they're yeah. coming off the six nil or and, and maybe um they're in cruise control a little bit. Uh, you felt like this result was kind of bubbling once they put CONCACAF Champions League behind them. Uh, they're a team that's that's really good in transition. Their front three are, are deadly. There's tons of pace up there with Rodriguez underneath. 
Um, so there's a front four that TFC are going to have to contain. I think this, um, that, that'll be interesting. They're good on step pieces. I like their left-hand side. Um, so it's, it's definitely a tough game. And I think what it does is it, is it allows us to, to not rest on our laurels of three wins and a draw in our last four. Um, I think the guys will know that they're up against uh, a stiff test and, and they'll be dialed in. Uh, some injuries for New York City. Uh, Tinner Home, uh, Cheneau, and Morales have all been out hurt uh, and all look to be out this weekend. Salcedo coming back in for Toronto FC, a big addition, uh, needless to say, uh, for Toronto FC. Do you change anything at all? The fact that you played them a month ago? When, over the course of your career, is, is is it difficult knowing, or does the familiarity actually could it be of an of an advantage to Toronto FC in this game? Yeah, good question. We went with a back three last time that worked. We beat them two one. I'd, I'd probably have that little bit of balance at the back. Um, I'd consider that where sometimes it looks like a five and get, give them a little bit of respect. Um, potentially a double pivot in there too. Um, also and Michael just give you a little bit more balance where kind of one of our central midfielders can fan out wide. And, uh, I think up top in, in Pozuelo and Jimenez and whether it's Schaffelberg or Nelson, you, you, you do have an attacking threat. TFC will create chances. Um, so the longer we stay in the game, the better, I, I think you, you can trust in some of our individual quality to create, um, goal scoring opportunities. Anything else on this one, Terry? Um, no, I just that they've got a good the, the front the front three are um, are very good and and with the players they're missing I think you've got a couple quarterbacks outside of the team uh, that the, sorry a couple quarterbacks that aren't playing in Morales Tinner home who take a lot of touches so I think the team is actually quicker with these players not in the side they move the ball a little bit quicker so they're a dangerous team even with these boys out it's red versus blue supper time on sunday 5 p.m eastern time on tsn toronto fc at new york city fc who are playing not in their home stadium funny enough i'm taking this is going to be red versus blue so whoever wins this game will be liverpool tfc the red win and liverpool is going to win the premier league at the blue of city you know, wins, then maybe Man City will win the Premier League. Any premonition there? Do we have any time to talk about Man United? No. Oh, <laughs> you, Sorry, I thought we were, were like 38 minutes in. I feel like we've had a really positive podcast, and then you go and do that. <laughs> do, in, in, in fairness, do you know what, when I'm watching United now, it kind of reminds me of TFC last season, right? Like a, a stand-in head coach trying to do their best, try to instill some kind of identity on the fly to a team that was struggling to find one to begin with. And a case where, much like Toronto FC, there, were, there was a clear out in the offseason. There, there'll be a clear out this summer for Manchester United. And you just got to get the right people in charge, the right decision makers, just to steady that chip and provide big picture direction. I think that's happened at Toronto FC. I think that needs to happen at Manchester United. So well, does that make sense? Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, and uh, a big all the best to our brothers down at Scotia Bank Raptors tonight. Big one. Got my hat on. Um, no, it looks yeah, by the time people listen to this podcast, game three will be done and dusted. That was the other thing about the win in Philadelphia. I was like, yeah, you won on the court on Saturday, but we got you on the pitch down here at BMO. I like him beat, man. I'm sorry to say, I'm touching wood as I say it. That guy's a handful. Trust the process. Okay. The process has taken trust about eight years, but I trust the process. So <laughs> they have James Harden on their team. So, you know, second round exit is coming their way. Um, <laughs> but, but before we run, uh, you want to mention Toronto FC two, another win last week. And that's two wins in a row for TFC two, by the way, they're playing at York Lions stadium, a good chance for you to get out and watch this team. They're not the training ground anymore. So good opportunity to go out and see uh, Toronto FC too. Uh, some exciting players on that team and an impressive win over Chicago last time out, Terry. Yeah. Ralph Prisco's brother, Hugo Mbonga. He's the number nine, scored a couple goals against uh, New York city. Um, came back twice to beat Chicago in their last game for two. Uh, there's a really good young center back, uh, South African background, Adam Perlman. He signed an emergency loan deal to come up to the first team. He's been crushing it. And it's cool to see a young academy coach, Gianni Cimini and Marco Casinovo uh, from the academy. They've taken the reins of that team. And 
Um, they're doing a fantastic job. They've scored seven in the last two and just taking a look at all the goals. They, they look like Bob Bradley goals, hard runs in behind good in transition. Um, so yeah, we're as a club, we're just ticking over nicely here. Uh, and Hugo's done well. He looked good in the preseason by all accounts and he's carried that form over he's doing some training with the first team as well. My understanding is so, uh, good stuff there. Uh, great to have you back, Terry. And, and for those who are concerned, I gave a shout out to my dog Reese on the weekend after 90 minutes on Facebook live. Um, she's doing better. She's out of intensive care. She's back home. And uh, I'm thrilled. I, I was very distracted uh, on Saturday night, but I'm in a much better mood now that uh, Reese Bulldog's home. Uh, Terry, uh, I know you're super busy right now. We always appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Maria did a wonderful job on the podcast last week, but party foul she didn't know what yacht rock was which is just i heard that yeah yeah and because of that my wife has just been playing yacht rock in the house 24 7 so maybe i should say (laughs) thank you to maria um yacht Yacht rock was in our top three wasn't it ever pods that was a good episode legendary buddy legendary (laughs) uh enjoy the games this weekend dude uh, and, and let's hope for points in five consecutive games for Toronto FC. Like I said, 5 p.m. a supper time kickoff TFC New York City FC on Sunday afternoon. Thanks to my good buddy Terry Dunfield, our fantastic producer Erica, keeping us on the right track. And thank you for tuning in as well. I am Gareth Wheeler. This is being Come On You Reds Wheels Down for this week's podcast. <laughs>